Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. Welcome back to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. My name is Ashley. And I'm Katie. And today we are going to talk to you about listening to your body and what the heck that actually means. And I don't know about you, Katie, but I've seen, you just see it in the health and wellness injury and on, on social media, we hear this phrase, oh, just listen to your body all of the time. But what we're going to talk about today is what does that actually mean? What, what things can you put into place if this is a struggle for you to start taking steps to start listening to your body more? So basically what we mean here is really just slowing down, tuning out the nonsense, which we're going to talk about and asking different questions like, how am I feeling? How are my energy levels today? How am I feeling in my body? How hungry or how full am I? And that's what Katie and I specifically are going to talk mostly about is when we talk about listening to your body, we're going to emphasize more of the hunger fullness aspect of listening to your body and building that trust with yourself to recognize the cues, the signals your body's giving to you and how you can respond. How's that sound, Katie? Oh, sounds so good because we're all so busy and sometimes eating just becomes something on the to-do list. It's not something that we take time to sit down and enjoy, let alone kind of pay attention to what we're doing and what we're putting in our bodies and then definitely how we're feeling before, during, and after that whole process. And we get so out of touch because we're so busy. And sometimes, you know, I know I definitely used to do this. Like I just wanted to just eat as fast as I can so I could get on to the next thing. And I think when, just like you were saying, really understanding what listening to your body means, like not your brain, like actually what your body is telling you. Cause it's talking to you all the time. (laughs) It sure is. We just got to listen or not, not necessarily listen, but like learn how to listen, Mm -hmm. learn how to listen and learn how to respond. And Katie, I remember when you and I worked together many, many years ago, this was a big struggle for you. And it's a big struggle. It was a big struggle for me as well. It's definitely a big struggle with a lot of the clients that we work with because a lot of us come from this dieting mentality where when you diet, when you're on a fad diet, you're not listening to your body. You're following a list of rules. And in the society we live in, it can be really challenging. Like Katie was talking about to slow down and actually start paying attention and, and learn what those signals are. Because guess what? When you were born, when Katie and I were born, when you listening were born, your like intuitive eating, your intuition, when it came to eating was so strong, more than likely you cried when you were hungry, you were satisfied and happy when you were full. And there wasn't a a guess on whether or not you were hungry or full because you screamed, like I said, when you were hungry and you were satisfied when you were full. So that's what we're kind of trying to get back to is, or basically those cues. We're not, you're not going to cry when you're hungry, hopefully, but we're going to figure out how you can listen a little bit better. Yes. I'm so excited. We're doing this episode because this is this, especially personally, this was such a game changer. So I'm excited to kind of introduce this idea and get people thinking about listening to their body and kind of maybe changing how they're doing things. Yeah. And Katie and I also know that each one of us has a different relationship with food. My relationship with food is different than Katie's. Our relationship with food is different than yours. And so we definitely want to honor that as well. This message that we're uh, going to talk about, it may feel really, really good to you. And it may be, you may be like, yes, you know, this is basically what I'm doing. And I feel really strongly and really good about it or this may feel like a challenge to you. I know a lot of people who come to work with Katie and I, this is, this is a big struggle. We do a lot with plant-based eating, but we also do a lot in helping our clients build a healthy relationship with food. So if you do feel like you need that one-on-one support to help you build a strong, healthful relationship with food, please visit the link in our bio in the show notes. um, And it'll take you to our one-on-one coaching page. If you would like that extra support. So let's jump right in. And one thing that Katie and I see a lot, this is a common experience with clients in particular, or just people in general, when they start their intuitive eating journey. And here's a quote from someone that I uh, just really, really admire. So this is what she says. When I was finally able to start eating intuitively, 
I felt an overwhelming sensation of both liberation and fear. So to repeat what she said again, she felt both a sensation of liberation and fear. So there was this excitement, this enthusiasm, this almost feeling of like relief, but then there was also this feeling of dread. How is this going to go? Will I be able to know when I'm actually hungry? Because I, I really haven't felt that sensation in a long time. Or will I be able, able to know or recognize when I'm approaching fullness? Because I haven't felt that sensation in a long time. Will I know when to stop eating? That is a big question. Or how much food is too much food? And how much food is too little? So these are the types of things that we kind of help our, help our clients navigate and that we've navigated ourselves, again, to build this, what we call like, listening to your body. So very simply stated, your, your body, Katie and I's body, our bodies consist of hunger and fullness cues. They consist of food preferences, cravings. So what I eat and how it makes me feel might be different than what Katie eats and how it makes me feel or how it makes her feel or what you eat and how it makes you feel. So we're all very different. And again, we have a very different relationship with food So what listening to your body very simply means is your body is giving you information and, or, and, or signals, and you're listening to what your body is telling you. And you're also taking the time to try and understand what it's telling you. And I think an easy example of this, and I'm going to give a couple more examples is like when you have to use the restroom, you know, typically you're not like, Ugh, like, why do I have to use the restroom right now? You know, I just went or it's, it's typically a natural response. Like, oh, okay. My body's signaling to me that I need to go use the restroom. And so you get up, go use the restroom and go about your day. And that's kind of where we're trying to get in a sense with hunger and with fullness. It's this like signal that your body is giving you. And it's up to you again, to listen and respond to what it's saying. And I just love that example because it's so easy to understand and kind of black and white. Those of us who have been in diet culture and been struggling with that for years and years and years, there's so much emotion attached to those signals, like to decide those rules, like Ashley was saying that are dictating when I'm supposed to be hungry, when I'm supposed to be hungry, like that's a thing. Or when I should stop eating, like, you know, a book can tell me when I'm satiated, like only I can really determine when that is. And I think because diet are so they're so cookie cutter, like they're supposed to work for everybody. And if it doesn't work for you or whatever, that's the That's the great thing about diets is they trick you into thinking that if it doesn't work, it's your fault. It's not the diet's fault, right? Yes, so true. (laughs) So I love that example of it's a, you know, it's a natural indicator of like, okay, when am I full? When am I hungry? It just makes it super black and white and takes the emotion out of it. So you don't have to feel guilty about being hungry, which just infuriates me about being a woman sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like there is literally, and still I struggle with this, like, you know, should I be hungry right now, even though I ate three hours ago, why am I still hungry? Like you should be fine. You know, it's just ridiculous. And so I love that example to help people really wrap their head around how simple it should be. And, and there's nothing that you should feel shame or guilt around these cues because they're completely biological, just like having to go to the bathroom. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And along those same lines, I had a client who it, um, she was very focused on like time, eat, like eating within a certain period of time, you know, you're not supposed to eat after seven, you shouldn't eat until eight, nine, whatever it is in the morning. And so we got to a place where she would eat her lunch and then she'd be hungry like an hour or two later. And she'd be like, what the heck? Like, why am I hungry? I literally just ate, I shouldn't be hungry. And she would try and resist, resist, resist until dinner. And then dinner would sort of be this free for all because she was so ravenous. And so when we took the time to evaluate what her day looked like, you know, from lunchtime before, 
we found that she really wasn't eating a whole lot, even for lunch. And so it wasn't satisfying. It wasn't satiating. And so her body was telling her like, Hey, an hour or two later, I need some food. Like this is not enough for me to sustain. And that would also, like I said, also lead to um, some struggles later in the evening. So when we kind of backed up, took the time to listen, assess, evaluate. And as she became more trusting of her body and the signals it was giving her, it helped build and rebuild this relationship with food that she was really, really struggling with. And really simply, again, very simply stated is your body just wants to stay alive. And so when it comes to hunger, especially, it's telling you it needs to eat for a very particular reason. And I love this quote. This, this quote is from Rachel Hartley. She's an intuitive eating dietitian. I'm going to quote her a couple of times, but one thing that she says about this is while your body's messaging system can certainly misfire under certain circumstances, for the most part, overall, it's going to lead you towards feeling. It's going to lead you towards feeding your body adequately and appropriately with a wide variety of foods, some fun and others fueling. So a good combination there. And I just, I like how she states that and that, you know, yes, our bodies by no means are we perfect. And yes, our bodies might quote misfire sometimes, but for the most part, those signals that it's giving you are for a reason. And I think it's important to remember that that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be like an overnight fix. Like, oh, okay. Uh, listen to your body and then everything will be perfect. Right. <laughs> It's a skill. It's something that you have to, we call it, you know, kind of an intuitive eating practice, just like a meditation practice or de-stressing practice, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's behavior change. So it takes some time and repetition to really start to tune out the noise because you may have developed some habits that are hard to break. So don't, don't think that this is like kind of an overnight, like, okay, no, no problem now. But I think that's really important to remember. And And just for me personally, like I know when I was working with Ashley, that was one of the things that we talked about was kind of getting rid of those rules that would tell me um, when it's appropriate to eat and when it's not appropriate. So um, the only, a lot of times, the only time I would have to eat all day, because I had a really, really, really busy job would be at night and it would be like at nine o'clock at night. And I would tell her, I'm like, you're not supposed to eat past seven. That's what all the, that's what, that's what they say. Uh, and she was like, uh, that is hogwash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean that, I mean, just that simple change and like that simple permission to make me realize, okay, well, that's not going to make or break things gave me permission to actually eat, actually eat dinner. Like, hello. Like it just, in hindsight, hindsight's 2020, it just seems so silly, but just her giving me that permission to be like, you are allowed to eat at nine o'clock, you know, at night. And when you think about it, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's such like a human construct. And that could mean different things to different people. Like our days look differently. So, um, that was such a, that was such a game changer. Yep. I love that practice piece as well, because if you're listening to this and you're like, Ashley, Katie, I, my body is not talking to me. Like I have no idea what it's telling me, or I'm really struggling with paying attention. What Katie said, this is a practice. Just like if you were to start meditating or when you said that, I've reminded me of when I went to a couple of yoga classes And some of these people were doing some crazy moves and I'm like, oh my goodness, I could never do that. But that was a story I was telling myself because some of these people, again, had been practicing yoga for years. And so of course they were doing some of these moves and I'd only been to a few classes. And so again, it takes time. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. You're not going to be doing like these crazy handstands, you know, on day one, it's going to take some time for you to, again, build that trust with your body because it's probably been disrupted or you may feel disconnected from what your body is trying to tell you. And that can be extremely frustrating, but don't let that stop you from do, like going about this practice. And I think that trust word is so important because I think we did another podcast where we were talking about, or maybe it was an email that we did about how many ad images that we have to kind of deal with yes. per day. So if you're thinking about kind of like your internal dialogue versus, I think it was like 10,000 
ad images per day that we're dealing with something insane it was um, yeah well that's like david and goliath that's like a and that's every single day like no breaks right and those of us who have been surrounded by diet culture and trying to you know lose weight or uh go on these fad diets that's just years and years and years and years of things that we're putting our trust into and ignoring everything internally so to switch that and like tune that out that requires some trust you're like in relationships you know trust trust can be tricky but once you get that trust within yourself oh my gosh just like Ashley was saying it's so liberating like you don't have to be chained to that nonsense anymore you can actually listen to the person who knows the most about you which is you yes oh my goodness we're both like smiling and like kind of like yelling at the camera (laughs) I like that and along those same lines as well Rachel the dietitian I mentioned earlier she has a really great analogy which I'm going to share with you she says imagine your body is a friend that you've lost touch with over time They keep calling you and they keep calling you and they're trying to keep the relationship going, but for whatever reason, you're not picking up the phone. And so they just, they stopped calling you, but now you want to reestablish the relationship. You realize maybe you were a crappy friend. So it's your turn to pick up the phone. So you ask them what's going on in their life and show up for them as a friend by taking actions that show you care. And I like that analogy because it kind of just puts it into perspective a little bit differently as well. And how that this does take time and your body is, and probably for a long time has been sending you signals. And when we're disconnected, it can be hard to read those signals, especially in the beginning, as we're trying to quote, listen to our body. And it's, it just, it takes time. So when using intuitive eating, it basically looks like you feeding yourself optimally throughout the day. And also checking in with yourself, with your body, and in a way, kind of asking what needs you need. You may not always know the answer, but at least you're showing up for yourself and you're demonstrating this care by checking in with yourself. And one way we have clients practice this is literally just by checking in with their body throughout the day, whether you set an alarm or whether you just kind of make note like, oh, wow, you know, you're kind of sitting there and you're like, I haven't checked in in a little while. Like what's going on? Or I'm thinking about food a lot right now. Am I hungry? You know, just taking that time to actually ask yourself questions and, and you may not even need food. It it goes so much further beyond just hunger and fullness. Maybe you just need a snack or maybe you need to take a walk around the block. That's one of my client's favorite things is he, he sits at his desk or stands at his desk a lot throughout the day. And he loves just taking 15 minutes for himself around midday because he says, Ashley, it makes such a difference in my afternoon. I'm much more on point. I'm not kind of, you know, feeling sluggish. It just, it makes a difference. And so he really does value that time. And he knows when he doesn't go on his walk, his afternoon is a lot different. You may need like a mini dance party or a bathroom break, or maybe just put on some slippers because your feet are cold. Anyways, what, what we're basically trying to say here is that you're, you're honoring all of your needs. You're taking that time to check in with yourself. And the more you do it, the more you're going to be building trust with yourself to be able to recognize what your body's telling you and what it is that you should do about it. Thirsty. That's all I was. I was, I was not. <laughs> I was not drinking. Ashley's like, what are you drinking? I'm like, what am I drinking? <laughs> Why can't I think of what I'm drinking? Cause I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was so busy. If I drank more then I had to stop and go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, so many times when you're thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. A lot of times you're just thirsty. So shout out to H2O. <laughs> It's true. It can be really helpful to be hydrated. That is so true as I'm taking drinks of water as we, as we talk. (laughs) So three things that you can do to work toward listening to your body when it comes to hunger and fullness is one, again, kind of like what we've been talking a lot about is just taking that time to check in with yourself throughout your day. And that means especially hunger, listening to when you're hungry and and more importantly, how your body signals hunger or fullness to you. And again, that takes time, but again, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And so taking that time to check in with yourself throughout the day, even when you're eating a meal, do you go, okay, am I, am I getting full or do I need more food? Do I need to go grab some more? It, 
it, again, you, you're continuing to build this trust within yourself. And then another thing, number two, and this can be a tough one. And we kind of talked about the beginning about blocking out all the nonsense is as best as possible, stop comparing your food intake or your hunger levels with other people. Woo. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Comparison syndrome. I mean, it's almost, it's almost addictive, right? Uh, shout out to you, new clients that I'm working with. She used to have kind of a difficult working environment where the diet culture was in the kind of the workplace where her kind of fellow employees would kind of talk about what each other were eating and be like, oh my gosh, you had two donuts today. Do you think that's a good idea? And can you imagine, I mean, not only are you having to struggle kind of what, you know, you're seeing just yourself and with, like we were talking about with diet culture, just bombarding you every single day with, you know, what you should look like and what, you know, you should be doing in America today. And then having to go to work and kind of defend your food choices to 20 people every day. God, that is so stressful and not healthy at all. No. Uh, so, you know, when we say tune out the noise, I mean, that could be the news, that could be social media, that could be your coworkers, that could be your spouse, that could be your yes. friends, your family. That's also a practice is to really not listen to that and having to focus on what your body is saying, because that noise can be really loud. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just surrounded, of course, it makes it hard to listen to what your body is saying, because, you know, it's, it's impossible to hear over all the nonsense. So be aware of kind of what your surroundings are and, and, you know, that might be the first step is to decide, okay, what changes can I make to make it so, so it's a little bit easier to hear what's going on inside. Yep. That reminded me of a struggle that I used to have with eating with Nick, my partner is he, I mean, he eats a fair amount, you know, he's six, five and he works out and, but I do too. And so there would be times where I'd be hung, like pretty hungry, but I'd be like, oh no, like I, I shouldn't quote, shouldn't eat more than him because you know, he, he should be eating more than me. But when I started healing this part of my relationship with food, I was like, oh, heck no. Like if I'm hungry, if I want to eat more than him, I want a second helping. If I want two desserts, I'm going to have them. And it doesn't matter what the heck he's doing. Cause what matters most is what my body needs and what it's telling me. And so that was sort of a, a game changer for me. And I know a lot of clients, women, uh, we can struggle with that sometimes. So it's, it can be helpful to, to work through that as well. Stop comparing and, and you do you. I didn't know that. I love that example. <laughs> yes. Uh, but even like when I would meal prep our meals, I would always like give him like double, which he does need a lot, but I would give him like double what I needed. But there were some days where I needed that double, but I would give it to him and not myself. And so, yeah, it was a lot of navigating and figuring that aspect out, but we're here now. And now I, I, I don't care what he eats. <laughs> I just care what I eat <laughs> to some extent. I think that's a good point to bring up is that every day is not going to look the same. Some days you're going to be hungrier than you are the next day. Why am I not hungry for breakfast? Maybe you had a big meal the night before, or why am I starving today? Maybe you ran three miles that you don't normally run. I think it's just learning to just get rid of the shouldas, you know, the should <laughs> and uh, the rules and listening to your body. I think that's the whole, the whole idea. Love it. Yeah. Yep. And this is probably a podcast for another day, a podcast topic. This is a big reason why I don't encourage macro counting because our bodies were not robots. We're going to fluctuate in what it is that we need, whether it's for each meal or each day. And so we'll say, we'll save that rant for another day. <laughs> <laughs> So the third thing that we put together is really taking the time to slow down and just taking that time to pay attention. And it sounds really simple, but like we said, this is a practice that it takes time. And so does slowing down and taking the time to pay attention. So just give yourself, 
I keep saying time, but just give yourself that time as best as you can to just try and listen to what your body is telling you. And one way that you can start doing this is during a meal, just try and pay attention to when that feeling of fullness is approaching as best as you can. So taking that time to do that. And I'm working with a new client. That's one of the first things that we talked about kind of as our action item list is just, you know, you don't have to write it down. You don't have to do anything about it. Literally just think about how you're feeling before, during, and after a meal, pick one day and do it and see what the results were. Right. And if you want to write it down, I'm kind of a nerd like that. So I like to (laughs) write it down and my memory is horrible. Uh, (laughs) If you like to journal or just add it to your, you know, add it to a note in your phone really quick. A lot of times the, the act of kind of writing it down or just acknowledging it will become part of kind of your daily routine, just like brushing your teeth. So it may feel a little bit daunting. You're like, oh my gosh, that's going to be like a whole extra thing that I have to do during the day. You know, even though it's like really simple, like Ashley was saying, (laughs) it takes a little bit of time, but then you go on autopilot and that just becomes part of your natural day. So if you put the work in, in the beginning, then you can enjoy the fruits of your labor at the end. So I love how life-changing it is when people are like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I get hungry at 11 o'clock and I wasn't eating until 2 p.m., right? And why am I struggling to make it to two? Why am I like wanting to take a nap? And if you approach these types of situations with curiosity, we talk a lot about this with curiosity and not judgment, you'll come to find that, oh, wow, like this is why my body is telling me this, that it's, it's for a reason, To kind of summarize what we've been talking about is listening to your body. It takes patience. It takes paying attention and it takes practice. But when you truly listen, when you truly take the time to slow down and listen, you'll realize that your body wants to be your friend, not your enemy. Mic drop. Mic drop. Oh my God. I got chills. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Love it so much. We got to put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. If you do have a question or if you're, if this is an area that you're really struggling, struggling with, please don't hesitate to reach out to Katie or I at plant centered Katie and at plant centered nutrition. You know, that is what we're here for. And two, if you have a follow-up question or a follow-up suggestion on what we could talk about to clarify this more or take it to the next level, please, please let us know. That's what we're here for. We're here to serve you. And we're so, so grateful that you are here. We'll see you next time. Bye. Until next time, keep thriving. 